Now let's try that example with a Carnot heat engine. So here it is. A Carnot heat engine receives 500 kilojoules of heat per cycle from a high temperature source at 650 degrees Celsius and rejects heat to a low temperature sink at 30 degrees Celsius. It says determine the efficiency and heat rejected from this engine. Okay, nothing too terrible here. We have two temperatures. That's enough to find the efficiency. And I bet we can, I bet we can figure out that heat rejected pretty easily too. So first off, let's draw a pretty picture. Look at it, it's beautiful. So I've got my high temperature reservoir. I've got my low temperature reservoir. I've got the Carnot heat engine. It produces some work. And I have most of the values here. The one thing I don't have is my heat low, okay? I also don't know what my net work output is. So that's a bit difficult too. We can find out both of those things. We just have to do some math. So now let's go ahead and get the efficiency. Now remember the Carnot thermal efficiency just depends on the temperatures. So if I know my temperatures, which I do in this case, and I put them into absolute units, don't forget to do that, I get my efficiency, which comes out to be 67.2%. Remember your efficiency equation pops out of a fraction or a decimal. You multiply about 100% to get into a percentage. Okay, so that got me the efficiency, but what about that heat being rejected? How much is that? Well, the other thing I told you is that for a Carnot heat engine, the ratio of heat rejected to heat input is the same as the ratio of my temperature of my so sink to the temperature of my source. I know these temperatures. I know this heat. I can therefore solve using some algebra for my heat is at the low temperature side. So I plug it in. And I get that my heat rejected is 164 kilojoules. If I wanted to, I could also find out the work being um, produced. That's pretty easy. It would simply be my QH times my thermal efficiency. It would go to 500 times 0.672. So somewhere around about 350. Actually, I can do better than that. I can do the math. 336. There you go. So 336 kilojoules of work is being produced from this heat engine. So this problem wasn't terribly difficult. Hopefully you saw how we can use these equations to solve things. And for a cardinal heat engine, it's usually not that hard to apply the equations. The biggest thing is just to remember that we don't create Carnot engines, we only use them as a theoretical tool to compare. We want to know what the best is, and so we use the Carnot heat engine to compare to the best. And therefore, from that, I can see how well I'm doing. Like if my system for the same situation had an efficiency that was just, let's say, 0.35, I can see I've got a lot of room to go to improve. Okay, I want to improve, I can do that. We'll learn more about that later and how we analyze that. So, thank you so much. I'll see you all later. Bye.